This movie will demonstrate how you can use DocumentX to quickly and easily create and edit documentation for one or more .NET assemblies. So I'm going to start by creating a brand new empty project. And I'm going to use the add .NET assembly command on the ribbon here to add a new assembly to the project. And for the purposes of this demo I'm going to choose one of the .NET framework assemblies, system.messaging. So that assembly has now been added to my project. Under the Assemblies node on the Project Explorer I can see the assembly. If I drill down I can see by default DocumentX has included just the public types within the various namespaces here. But I can change any of the ones that are automatically excluded, simply tick them to include them, or remove any classes, uh, enumerations, interfaces that I don't want to include in my documentation simply by ticking and unticking on the Project Explorer here. What DocumentX has also done is add a content file to the Project Explorer, which is where I can go about authoring additional content to supplement the default content that DocumentX will automatically generate for me. But before I go into the content authoring side of things, I'm going to do a quick build just to illustrate what DocumentX will produce for you without any additional authoring at all. So I'll skip to the end of the build to save some time. It took around 38 seconds to build and compile the help file for that assembly. Around 600 topics have been generated. So by default, DocumentX has generated a compiled CHM file and a browser help output. Uh, DocumentX supports a wide range of output formats to target all the various versions of the help viewer that ships with Visual Studio and also for publishing directly onto a web or internet site. And you can choose the output format you want to generate within the build profile editor on the format page. And you can create additional build profiles if you want to generate multiple outputs from the same project. So I'll just briefly return to the build results screen here and click on the link to view the web output. And you can see that a table of contents, index and search have been generated automatically. And a rich set of information has been generated for every type and member within the generated documentation including uh, object relationship diagrams on the type pages, colorized syntax sections for the popular .NET languages, inheritance hierarchies, and fully hyperlinked related pages so I can navigate my way easily through the documentation. All in a modern dynamic format that developers will immediately feel at home with and with content features such as collapsible sections and tab strips within the documentation to make it easy to navigate. Any references to types in the .NET namespace, for example if I drill down to the members page for the message class, I can see some inherited members in the methods section. Any of those links are automatically generated to the MSDN documentation so I can follow those directly through to the .NET Framework docs. So the basic descriptive content we see here is automatically obtained from the assembly XML comment file, which gives our documentation a great head start. But I'll probably want to supplement or override that existing content in places, and I can easily do that using the content authoring tools within Document X. If I double click on the content file that was added to our project when we added the assembly in the Project Explorer, a content file editor window will be open for me. And by clicking it on any of the namespaces or drilling down to any of the classes or the class members. The editor is populated on the right hand side. The editor looks very similar to the generated pages we were just looking through but contains these editable sections bordered by a dotted line and I can author uh, directly within any of those editable sections and immediately above these editable sections uh, I can see some content here with a grey background and with a caption at the top summary.net Excel comment files and this is showing me the content already available from the XML comment file for this assembly. So I can see right away whilst I'm editing exactly what content already exists and decide if I want to supplement or override it. If I scroll a little bit further down towards the bottom of the page here I can see these icons next to the exceptions, permissions, example and see also sections and I can use these to quickly and easily add items to these sections of the documentation exceptions that my class may generate, permissions it requires, uh, example code and see also links. It's useful to understand that the content file we're working with here does not contain a bunch of boilerplate HTML topics. The only content that is actually stored in the content file is the content I author in here. Everything else is generated on the fly by Document X, so your documentation is always accurate and up to date even if the assembly changes. And you can switch templates, change options to include or exclude certain sections, or customize the standard templates without having to go back and rework a load of boilerplate topics. And just in case you're worried about what happens if you rename types or members within your assembly, we have a specific tool 
find orphaned content tool that can identify and easily reassign any content created against types that be moved to another namespace or renamed in the assembly. I'm not going to cover it in this movie, but there's also a version of this editor included with Visual Studio that you can use to directly edit your source comments. It allows you to work in the same rich authoring environment, but all the content is written back to your source code as XML comments. So you have a choice there about where you do your authoring, in the source comments, using the same rich editor, or within the documented content files. And you can also mix and match the two approaches. A common idea is to include just the basic summary content in the source comments, and include your more extensive remarks, example code, in the content file editor. So I'm going to go ahead and add some content to the remarks section for the message class here. And the editor here is a fully featured HTML editor, so I can use all of the commonly used formatting features. I can include images, easily apply formatting and style rules, include hyperlinks, and also complex widgets such as drop-down sections, note boxes, etc. that DocumentX includes. I'll also just add a, a see also link to this topic. And I'm just going to link to one of the other classes within the assembly here. You see my custom see also link listed at the bottom here. And I'll also add quickly some example code. And we can see that example appears directly within the editor here. And also if I briefly switch to preview, I can see my example and also my see also link and my custom remarks content in the preview page. Beyond the textual content, the see also and examples, I can use additional content items here in the content file editor to exclude items from the output by using a simple exclude flag or by applying more complex build flags uh, that I can define in the build profile editor. I can also add custom index keywords, uh, mark a member as new in the table of contents, or use the content from content item type to copy the descriptions, etc., from other items in this assembly or another assembly in the same project to avoid duplication. I'm not going to go into detail on any of those, but there are movies that cover those particular areas also available on our website. You can also create and use custom content item types if you wanted a brand new section within your documentation and customize the default templates we are using here to extend the available sections or to generate the style or content of any of the generated pages. So as well as adding descriptions to the automatically generated topics using the content file editor, I can also author completely new additional topics. And I do that using the new topic ribbon button. And this will create an uh, open for edit a brand new topic. I'll just give it a name and a title, a background topic, and some basic content. Once again, this is a fully featured HTML editor and the content authoring ribbon tab gives us access to a whole bunch of uh, authoring functionality including images, hyperlinks, tables. Now I've created the new topic, I can add it to the table of contents just using drag and drop. So I drag the table down to the table of contents tab and then just drop it right at the head of the table of contents. The document X placeholder node you see on the table of contents editor here is where all of the automatically generated content will go. So I can arrange my free format uh, conceptual topics around that. So now I've added my custom supplementary content to one of the assembly items and a brand new conceptual topic, I'll repeat the build I did earlier on. Once again I've skipped to the end of the build and if I open the web output once more I can see my conceptual topic in the table of contents and that's also the default topic that the help file opens up to. And if I drill down through to the messaging class in which I added my additional content I can see my custom remarks content my example and uh, my also see also link down the bottom here. So back in the document X application within the build profile editor, which I can get to from the project explorer here under build profiles, there's a .NET settings page um, and three related pages that contain a whole range of options you can use to customize the output that document X will generate for .NET documentation. So you can in opt to include or exclude certain features, filter the attributes and interfaces you want included, choose different languages you want to include on the syntax sections, so on and so forth. Uh, there's also some settings for how and in what way document X will use your XML source comments and options for the object relationship diagrams that are automatically generated. Beyond the options that are specific to .NET assemblies, there are a range of other options in the build profile editor here you can use to control the output format and content. I won't be covering those in this movie, but just be aware that the build profile editor here is the place to find those settings. And if I'm looking for something specific, I can always use the search box on the ribbon here to try and find it. For example, if I want to know how to change the copyright notice in the generated pages, 
I type in the search box and the results are listed for me here and if I click it will take me directly to the page in the build profile editor that option is contained. As another example perhaps I want to include a logo in the header of each generated page and the research results take me directly there. If I search for something that isn't directly represented in the user interface according to the keywords that I'm typing I can also use the link here to search directly within the help hub and that will look in both the online help, our online knowledge base and also our online movies to give you a rich set of resources for finding the information that you're after. So our initial documentation looks pretty good and I can go on and flesh out the content for all of the items contained in the content file editor to finish it off. And when you're ready to think about publishing the documentation we have a bunch of project tools you can use to ensure the quality of your output and I can find those on the tools ribbon tab. DocumentX includes tools for project find and replace, spell check and verifying hyperlinks and in addition you can use the undocumented items tool to make sure that you've covered every corner of the assembly particularly for documenting for a new release. This tool will identify for you any items that don't have a basic level of documentation and you can choose what that means in terms of content so you can easily spot the gaps in your doc documentation before you send it out to your customers. Once you're ready to ship your documentation, you might be reassured to know that DocumentX can generate an XML comment file for your assembly that precisely matches the documentation you've generated. So no matter where you've decided to author your documentation, you can ship with an XML comment file that's completely in sync with your docs. One final feature I'll briefly touch on here is localization. DocumentX has comprehensive support for authoring and building documentation for multiple locales, so I can build documentation for English, German, Japanese, etc., all within the single project. So I'll briefly illustrate how that feature works by adding an additional Japanese locale to my project. So on the project ribbon tab, I'll click the button to add a new locale. Scroll down and find Japanese. I can then switch to that new locale on the drop down using the drop down on the ribbon. And if I then open up this content file again, it will be open for the Japanese locale. And you can see that the standard phrases and terminology used throughout the documentation are translated for us automatically and uh, there are several languages supported out of the box to which you can add additional ones in the template editor. And I can type directly within the editor here to add my Japanese content and that's saved along with the primary locale content within the same project. If I'm using DocumentX and Help Studio Bundle I can also use the localization export and import features to send out my content to a third party translation provider in an industry standard Excel IFF format to make it really easy to get a solid and manageable work localization workflow. So that concludes this movie providing an overview of how you can use DocumentX to quickly and easily generate documentation for one or more .NET assemblies. If you have any questions or suggestions, please do contact us either by email to support .com or directly from the smile, frown or support request buttons on the help and support ribbon tab in DocumentX or Help Studio.